Hi, and welcome to the Seek Sustainable Japan podcast. I'm JJ Walsh, your host. And in this episode, I'm talking about a Medium article that I wrote about Japan's top three for the prime minister position, which is happening this week in Japan, September 27th, and how they feel about Japan's energy future. What are they、uh, having as their vision for an energy future? And some other related items in terms of pushbacks for sol- solar energy、uh, farms, mega solar, it's called in Japan. So, sustainability is an underlining theme of all the big issues for the next Japan Prime Minister energy, food, and family. It's worth having a look at how the top three contenders differ on these key issues. On September 27th, this week, Friday, the ruling LDP party will choose their next president from a group of seven candidates. But there are really three who are the top contenders, which are really in the spotlight. Now, in an earlier post and podcast this month, I shared insights from the interview with political science Dr. Donna Weeks. On the top seven candidates. Now there are actually nine vying for the top leader position at the beginning of this month. Now, as the election is only a few days away, it seems to be down to really the top three candidates Koizumi, Ishiba, and Takaichi. The ruling party election. Likely to choose Japan's next prime minister is shaping up to be a three way race, according to Nikkei Asia on September 21st this year. Among former environmental minister Shinjiro Koizumi, former defense minister Shigeru Ishiba, and Sanae Takaichi, minister in charge of economic security. For Japan's energy future, Koizumi has stated, according to Reuters, that he wants to introduce a carbon tax, which is essential for international trade as the EU will raise their standards for products and services with a carbon tax. In 2019, Koizumi was strongly anti nuclear, but in 2024, as he enters the race for president and then prime minister, He hinted he may have softened his attitude to nuclear power, stating, We may need to use all power sources, according to the Japan Times.、Uh, there is still a lot of favor for nuclear energy, even though since the Fukushima disaster, which is still ongoing,、uh, public attitude toward nuclear power has really been diminished. Now, Ishiba has stated, according to the Japan Times, that he wants to bring nuclear power down to zero and increase other renewable energy sources like geothermal, which has great potential in Japan but has yet to be developed and is expected to only supply 1% of power by 2030, according to the current vision for、uh, energy mix in the future, according to current policy. Now, Ishiba wants to also increase hydropower, which is expected to supply 11% of power by 2030, according to current plan estimates. Takaichi has said, according to the Japan Times, she wants to increase the use of nuclear energy with smaller, more efficient power plants, none of which have yet been developed in Japan. Currently, Prime Minister Kishida's green transformation plan is to increase nuclear power, which is already uh, built, uh, offshore wind, ammonia, and hydrogen, both of which have yet to be developed. But there are arguments that implementation of his green transformation plan is too costly, as it's in the trillions of yen. According to Japan Times, September this year, under the current energy strategy adopted by former Prime Minister Yoshihige Suga's government in 2021, Japan's 2030 energy mix calls for 
to 38% of electricity to be generated from renewable energy sources, solar, onshore and offshore wind, geothermal, hydropower, and biomass, 20 to 22% from nuclear power, 20% from liquefied natural gas, 19% from coal, and 2% from oil. Hydrogen and ammonia are expected to contribute 1%. That was according to a Japan Times article in September this year. Rural mega solar backlash versus hybrid potential for solar farms. Now recently in Japan, there has been a rural pushback against large solar projects that cut down forests ruin the beauty of the landscape or create glare for residents. Japan aims to increase solar energy input from the current 79 gigawatts in 2022 capacity to 16% of power needed, which would be 100 gigawatts by 2030, according to the Environmental International Energy International Association, EIA. Some ways to improve mega solar farms is to create dual purpose for generating clean energy, such as agrivoltaics, sharing farmland and farm animal spaces with solar farms for mutual benefit. For example, giving shade uh, for plants so they don't get too dry, which retains moisture, and revenue sharing from the money made from selling energy to the grid. There's also benefits for farm animals uh, to use underneath the solar panels for grazing, which also keeps the grass down, uh, which helps keep the area clear so the solar panels can uh, uh, accept <laughs> or soak in uh, the most uh, solar energy and be the most efficient. According to Solar Sharing Farm website, one of the primary benefits of agrivoltaics is the ability to sell energy generated and earn a stable profit. Additionally, the government offers a fixed unit price for the purchase of electricity over a 20-year period. The government's feed-in tariff, FIT system, for renewable energy supports this stable revenue stream. Another alternative to improving uh, the system of mega solar, as it's called in Japan, or these solar farms, is to have sea-based or water-based solar energy. Solar panels that are created to float on waterways help to cool the water and also the panels are kept cooler, which makes them more efficient and they create more energy. There's also less evaporation. Uh, they have found when the solar panels are covering water sources, especially fresh water sources. And now, according to the Japan government, in July 2024, overheating can be prevented if the panels are located on a water surface, the cooling effect of which allows them to maintain their power output. Also, there is no need to worry about slopes and inclines with floating systems unlike in the case of land installations of solar panels. Of course, you also do not have to uh, cut down farms or create uh, landscape eyesores or create glare on the land, but you might have to have glare on the water issues. Um, there's also the issues if the waterways are affected by uh, big storms and typhoons and whether it's more stable on the water versus land is yet to be proven. Now, according to Solar Power Portal UK in March of 2024, report analyst Holly Blades, PhD researcher at Lancaster Environment Center in Lancaster University said, our understanding of biodiversity at solar farms is growing as more ecological monitoring, monitoring data are collected across an increasing number of UK solar farms. Groups such as birds and invertebrates appear to respond positively to biodiversity-focused management at solar farms, and we hope to continue working with the data to further unpick 
the patterns identified. This is very good news, and of course this is from the UK, but this is another potential way to more effectively use solar farms. Solar farms can support natural area biodiversity. Japan has a lot of mountainous and rural areas, even a lot of plots which are abandoned farmland as the number of farmers is declining. A rewilding approach in tandem with creating mega solar farms might work very well here. In the UK, a study published this year showed how using solar farms in natural areas can support biodiversity. They found animals, insects, and plants all flourished in combination with well-planned solar farms. So that, that key part of that sentence, well-planned solar farms, of course, is very important. Now, one exciting thing that's uh, going into effect in April 2025 is Tokyo Governor Koike, who was just re-elected, and her rooftop solar mandate. Tokyo Governor Koike, who is elected again uh, in 2024, will certainly help Japan boost its solar capacity and cut carbon emissions as Japan's most populated city now has a population of 14 million in Tokyo, will require all new homes to be fitted with rooftop solar, rooftop solar from April 2025. Governor Koike states that now only 4% of roofs with solar potential are fitted with PV solar energy panels. The Tokyo government will offer home buyers subsidies to help maintain demand for new buildings despite the added costs. Of course, solar is an investment which will reduce energy costs for owners and residents as well as provide a level of energy security with a self-sufficient power supply. According to Tokyo Portfolio, Installing solar panels not only reduces monthly electricity bills, but also ensures power availability during outages. As we are having more uh, of the strongest storms ever due to climate change and global warming, these are real issues, whether you will have a, a dependable power supply. And if you have your own energy being created on your roof, this is a real asset. As many local governments take the lead from Tokyo, this could create initiatives to have mandatory solar PVs for all roofs on all buildings across Japan. In contrast to nuclear or fossil fuel burning power plants, the costs are much more reasonable if you look at how the energy is created from how the panels are created all the way to the end of life cycle. So the circular economy view of solar and wind is much more positive and much more effective, cost effective too, uh, than burning f uh, energy, burning fossil fuels for power, or even nuclear, creating nuclear plants and the whole circular cycle. So, you are, for solar energy especially, if it's on rooftop solar, you are creating energy where you need it and usually when you need it, as solar panels are also not dangerous for residents if there is a natural disaster like an earthquake or tsunami. If it breaks, it doesn't cause a dangerous health and safety situation for residents. For even further self-sufficient clean energy, homeowners could combine rooftop solar with a home battery system to allow for energy storage during the day which can be accessed at night. Retired Japan has an interesting blog about installing solar and battery systems in Japan um, from a lot of case studies, so I'll put that link below. Uh, in the US recently, there was uh, argument in Congress about solar power and how it's not a good idea because it doesn't create energy at night. But then if you combine solar power with battery storage, then you can use it anytime. But usually, like we are working from home now, we have solar on our roof, we have an electric car. I charge the car during the day when our solar panels are making energy that 
it can use. So when I drive, it's like driving free, clean energy. It's wonderful. And we've paid off our solar system on the roof. So we're mostly using energy, electricity at home during the day while we're working during the day. We go to sleep at night. So it's not as much of an issue if you're not making as much energy at night. Of course, none in the case of solar. But we need a lot of these solutions and there is a lot of potential for more solar, rooftop solar and mega solar in Japan. Now, one of the other issues, of course, for the next leader of Japan, just like in America, is about taxes. So the idea of whether or not to raise corporate taxes uh, is always a big issue. Another top issue for these top three candidates, of course, is whether or not to raise corporate taxes or maintain the existing plan. Uh, Shigeru Ishiba has stated that he wants companies in Japan to bear more of the tax burden, according to this Reuters article. Sanae Takaichi has said she would not raise corporate taxes for at least a few more years, according to Reuters. And Koizumi said he will follow through with the current government plan to raise corporate taxes and focus on government reform. In terms of social issues, Koizumi, as the youngest candidate, seems very keen to address modern Japan society issues. For example, he said he will support women to choose to keep their maiden name when they marry, allowing married couples to have different names has been a heavily debated topic in the LDP. Koizumi has also made international headlines when he chose to take paternity leave, according to this link by the New York Times. Ishiba has said he wants to focus more on issues in regional areas, areas outside of Tokyo, as Ishiba is a proud member of his hometown in Totori, which is famous for its sand dunes, not too far from where I am in Hiroshima, kind of in the middle of the country. A focus on supporting rural areas is one of the reasons he may be more popular at the moment with the general public across Japan, according to Asahi News. So what did you think? Any of the issues of energy, tax, or societal issues that the next top three PMs are debating? Uh, anything stood out for you? I'd love to know. Uh, get in touch. You can find me at JJ Walsh on most social media or Inbound Ambassador on Instagram and Facebook. Look forward to hearing from you and have a great day.